What's up everybody, this is Andre, EMIP, and today I'm going to talk about the exposure triangle, specifically the aperture setting. Check it out. Okay, just the other day I did a video on the aperture settings and uh, f-stop numbers and the easy way to remember. Well, since then I got a lot of email requests and a lot of um, questions about if I could teach the other parts of the exposure triangle like the ISO and the shutter speed. So I decided to make a three-part series to try to make it really quick about the exposure triangle, the shutter, the ISO, and aperture, starting with the aperture. Now, this is my Nikon 50 uh, 1.8. And what the aperture does is control the quantity of light that comes into the camera. And it does that by this little ring called the aperture. You can kind of see it. I think you can see it. Open, close, open, close. And that's how it controls the quantity of light coming into the camera. Now, I love this setting because this gives you the greatest control of creativity when making an image. And that control is depth of field. The larger the opening, which gives you the shallow depth of field, a lot of photographers will refer to that as wide open, which is a small f-stop number, like 2.8. Now the small number, I should say the small aperture setting gives you the greatest depth of field. You can see way, way, way down there from the front all the way to the back. That's equivalent to like f22, it'll give you a great depth of field, and it also allows the least amount of light. And it's also a small number is a high f-stop number and that's the most um, confusing part when you think about f-stops uh, if you're wide open you know if you open big it's a small number if you're tiny it's a big number um, a little practice and you'll get used to that now your aperture setting comes at a cost you just can't decide I want to be wide open a shallow depth of field or a narrow depth of field because it depends on the light so if you want to shoot wide open, have a nice shallow depth of field and bring your subject right into the foreground, it comes at a cost. If you have too much light, you can't do it because too much light is coming into the camera. So sometimes you would need a neutral density filter to go in front of this, which is like sunglasses to the eye. Also, if you're shooting indoors or if you don't have enough light, you need to shoot wide open to get enough light into the camera and you might not want to shoot wide open. You might want to have a greater depth of field. So it, sometimes it, it comes at a cost. That's the reason why the settings are the exposure triangle because each one is connected to the other. If you adjust one setting, something else has to change for the other two so you can have a correct exposure. So that's about it. Hopefully you understand the aperture a little better. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel so I can give you more content like this, including the other two videos, which is the ISO and the shutter. Now, I know this was a short video and I kind of can't really explain everything. So if you have any questions, comment down below or email me directly at andre at nvmeimages.com. That's it. Stay tuned for the shutter, which is the next video in the series. EMIP out.